So this is really, really great news here. Um, I'm not sure how many of you saw this. It was announced uh, yesterday. So Cori Bush endorsed Amy Valella, who is running for Congress again. This is absolutely important because for Cori Bush to endorse someone who is running against one of her colleagues... She knows that this is going to be unpopular. She knows this is going to be divisive within Democratic Party ranks. But she did it anyway because she knows that Amy Valella is the real deal. And this takes courage to do. This is from Mother Jones. Uh, the title is, The newest member of the squad is already backing challengers to her colleagues. Cori Bush is jumping in early to try to boost the ranks of the progressive wing of the House. This is really, really important. Uh, one of Congress's most left-leaning lawmakers is sticking her neck out early to endorse a primary challenger against an incumbent member of her caucus. Representative Cori Bush is endorsing Amy Valella, a Democratic candidate mounting a challenge against Representative Dina Titus in Nevada's 1st Congressional District, which includes most of Las Vegas. Bush, one of six squad members who uphold Congress's left flank, won her seat last year after defeating former Representative Lacey Clay in a Democratic primary. Bush's endorsement of Valella marks an aggressive early push against a fellow member of her party, something her fellow squad members have generally approached with caution. And this is correct, actually. We'll talk about this. Even if many of them owe their seats to those very sort of challenges, uh, sorts of challenges. As a newly elected lawmaker, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez raised eyebrows when she called for primary opponents against soon-to-be colleagues soon after her 2018 election. But after that initial broadside, she has ended up being choosy about her endorsements when she actually started working alongside them as a member of Congress. She lent her support only to a handful of candidates, and typically not until much later in the cycle. Ocasio-Cortez conspicuously declined to endorse Bush's 2020 rematch against Clay after campaigning on Bush's behalf in 2018. Now, this is what I wanted to talk about, because even though AOC explicitly called for primary challenges to incumbent Democrats, she did not endorse Cori Bush. And I mentioned this uh, back in 2020, and it was really hurtful to me to see this because AOC, as soon as she won her primary, she went to bat for Cori Bush to try to help her win her primary. This was in 2018. And so, you know, you you would think that come 2020, she's going to be there again for Cori Bush. But she chose to sit that one out. Now, the reason why I suspect she didn't endorse Cori Bush is because Lacey Clay, who was Cori Bush's primary opponent and the incumbent Democrat at the time, he co-sponsored the Green New Deal. So, if you're in this situation and you're AOC and it's very unlikely that Cori Bush is going to defeat Lacey Clay... And the incumbent is backing the Green New Deal. What do you do? And th this is all speculation. I don't necessarily know what was going through her head. But I think she probably made a calculation. It was a miscalculation, turns out. And she thought, look, I don't want to piss off Lacey Clay and have him not back the Green New Deal. And then I, you know, end up endorsing Cori Bush. And then that's one last co-sponsor for the Green New Deal. She probably thought, look, I'll suck it up. I won't say anything. I'll sit this one out. And then just... Hope that Cori Bush wins, but I'll get that endorsement for the Green New Deal. That's what I'm suspecting happened. Again, I have no idea what her reasoning was, but still, it, it was really heartbreaking because, you know, back in 2018, um, if you don't recall, progressive leftists, like, we went to war for AOC because Ro Khanna uh, didn't endorse AOC right away. So he initially endorsed Joe Crowley over AOC, and then progressives like myself and Kyle Kulinski reached out to Ro Khanna and we we tried to change his mind in good faith. We had conversations with Ro Khanna trying to say, look, if you want supporters of your agenda, then you, you really should back AOC because she will co-sponsor all of your legislative initiatives. And so the reason why I think that AOC didn't support Cori Bush in 2020 was because Ro Khanna basically said that, you know, he, he got Joe Crowley to support some of his initiatives and he didn't want to piss off Joe Crowley. So I can only assume that that's the same logic that AOC applied. Like, she doesn't want to piss off people who are supporting her priorities and she wants to get things done. I don't know, though, right? But at the end of the day, if you, if you want to affect change in Congress, you have to get new progressives elected. So ultimately, I would err on the side of always endorsing 
these progressive primary challengers. And you could just add the caveat, look, if you don't like that I'm endorsing your primary opponent, feel free to endorse my primary opponent. It's fine, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that we shouldn't work together, that you shouldn't co-sponsor the legislation that I introduce and I can't support your, you know, legislative priorities. Let's just put this aside and support democracy. And if we want to, let's uh, let's endorse the primary opponents. Um, so, I mean, long story short, again, this is this is difficult because this is all speculation on my part. Um, it may be partially conjecture because it's not necessarily true that since Ro Khanna supported Joe Crowley uh, initially before the double endorsement um, or dual endorsement, I forgot what he called it, uh, because he supported Joe Crowley, you know, because Joe Crowley was supporting his legislative priorities. It's not necessarily true that AOC made the same calculation, but regardless, I think it's, it's pretty logical to deduce that that's one of the reasons that she considered. Like, she was trying to build up support for the Green New Deal, which is important, and she didn't want to, you know, ruffle any feathers. So, Bush tells me she's not worried about ruffling her colleagues' feathers. Speaking of ruffling feathers, she does that all the time, she explains, when she expresses her support for defunding the police. Even her moderate colleagues wish she wouldn't. I understand that people within my caucus may not like the fact that I'm endorsing Amy, period, and that's okay, she tells me. Bush notes her endorsement is not to go against Titus. This is not a jab at the person that's in the seat, Bush says. This is just saying that we need change. And that's exactly it. Um, I'm one of the individuals who think that there should be a primary challenge every single two years it doesn't matter who even uh cory bush aoc there should always be a primary challenge because guess what i'm principled and i believe in the concept of democracy so um you know th this whole concept of uh trying to sh or notion rather of trying to shield incumbent democrats from primary challenges that's antithetical to democracy if you want to if you want to have a strong uh person go up against the Republican in the general, then you should support strong primary challenges. So, you know, that's it. Um, th this is just really great news. Uh, when I brought on Cori Bush, she was on my show multiple times, but when I brought her on with Amy Valela in 2019, I want to say, when she launched her second bid for the uh, congressional sh seat that she now holds, I asked her, I'm like, you know, you see how AOC is being treated and you see the way that she's being attacked relentlessly by Fox News. Uh, how do you how do you think you're going to be able to to deal with that? Because psychologically, that's going to take its toll. I mean, you're a strong woman, but you know we're all human beings. And she said, "Look, I've been through so much that nothing that they say or do is going to break my will, and I don't care about their criticisms." And and to me, this is her like living up to that. Like, it's really it's really good to see. Um, so I'm I'm really thankful that she did this. This endorsement is absolutely going to help Amy Valella. And by the way. As soon as uh, Nina Turner's campaign is over, we have to go to bat for Amy Valella because there's nobody who's going to be a stronger fighter for Medicare for All than Amy Valella who could speak specifically to how her daughter's life would have been saved if she had Medicare for All. So, yeah.